So in this video, I want to talk about our first major result. That's the famous orbit stabilizer theorem. So the, the orbit stabilizer theorem. The orbit stabilizer theorem. And hopefully once we state and prove this theorem, we can use it to find out what the symmetry groups of the platonic solids are. But before I continue, I encourage you to watch the previous two parts in this series about orbits and stabilizers, if you haven't already done so. That's if you aren't already familiar with what orbits and stabilizers are. So let's now discuss the orbit stabilizer theorem. So here's our theorem. So theorem. So just as before, when I define the uh, orbits and stabilizers, I'm going to let G be a group acting on X. So X is a set and G is a group. So let G be a group acting on a set X. And I'm also going to let little x be an element in the set X. So I'm also going to let x, little x, be an element in the set big X. And recall in the last couple of videos I defined the orbit and the stabilizer. So let's redefine those. I define the orbit of x as follows. I define that as the set of all gx such that g was in g. So this is a set of all possible destinations of x under g. So that was the orbit of x. I also define the stabilizer of x by g. So the stabilizer of x, which I denoted stab x, that was defined as a set of all elements g in g such that gx equals x. So in this case g stabilizes x. If I take g and apply it to x, I get back my x again. So those are the orbits and stabilizers if you couldn't remember them. So now I'm going to define a map. So, so the map, so g from g mod stab x to the orbit of x, which is given by, so given by, I'm going to define this map as, follow, this map as following. So it's going to be g stab x, which maps to gx. And I claim that this map is a bijective mapping. And so one very useful corollary of that is, since this map is a bijection, then if g is a finite group, so G is finite, and it usually is in the context of platonic solids. It follows that uh, we can do something with the sizes of these things. So it then follows that the size of G mod the stabilizer of X is equal to the size of the orbit of X. And then it follows that the size of G is equal to the product of the size of the stabilizer. So the product of the size the stabilizer with the size of the orbit of x. So that's my useful corollary and we're going to use this to classify these symmetry groups of the platonic solids. So let's now prove this theorem. So let's prove the orbit stabilizer theorem. So here's a proof. I'm also going to let g1 and g2 be elements in g. So let g1 and g2 be elements in the group g. Then the following statements hold. We have uh, g1x equals g2x. That's a g1x. That's true if and only if g2 inverse g1x equals x. So in this case I've just multiplied the left hand side by g2 inverse because g2 inverse times g2 is x because g is a group. And I've got g2 inverse g1x on the left hand side. So this is what I'm left with. But if g2 inverse g1x equals x that means that g2 inverse g1 actually stabilizes x because when I take this thing and apply it to x, I get back my x. So this means that g2 inverse g1 belongs to the stabilizer of x because it stabilizes x. Now that's true uh, if and only if g1 stab x equals g2 stab x. But because this goes in both directions, because I've had an if and only if statement each time, then it follows that the map is well defined and injective. It's well defined in one direction and injective in the other. So, hence the map is well defined and injective.
And it's also surjective since G was arbitrarily chosen, meaning by definition X was acting on by all elements of G, because they've chosen any element G in G. So uh, it's surjective since G since G was arbitrary. And since I've got an injective map and a surjective map, which is well defined, then it follows that the map is bijective. So therefore, the map is bijective. And since the map is bijective, then as I previously stated, that means I can compare the size of these, these two things and make the following conclusion. So the conclusion is that the size of G is equal to the size of the stabilizer of X times the size of the orbit of X. And that's the most useful part of the orbit stabilizer theorem in this series. So QED, if you like. So that's the orbit stabilizer theorem. And when we use it, our general tactic for each platonic solid will be to find the orbits and stabilizers associated with them and see what they tell us about the symmetry group G of the platonic solid.